Welcome to the video where we will be covering problems or exercises similar to those that you will have to do on your own in SmartTut 3. The first exercise we're looking at is on page A9 in your textbook and we are going to look at number 45. It says solve the equation for x where we have the absolute value of x plus 3 equals the absolute value of 2x plus 1. Firstly, think about what does this mean? This means that either x plus 3 equals positive 2x plus 1 or x plus 3 equals negative 2x plus 1. And from there, you can just solve x by yourself. We will not be doing all of the problems completely because the idea of this video is just to help you with your thinking process when you attempt the problems in the SMART tutorial by yourself. The next exercise we're looking at is number 52. It says solve the inequality the absolute value of x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 3. Okay so once again think about what does that mean. That means that x plus 1 must either be greater than or equal to 3 or x plus 1 must be less than or equal to minus 3. So from here, all we do is we solve x in both cases. So if we solve it in the first equation, we'll end up with x greater than or equal to 2. And in the second one, we'll have x less than or equal to minus 4. So we can write our answer as follows. x will be an element of the interval that goes from minus infinity. Just note the minus infinity is not included up to minus 4 which is included or it will be an element of the interval going from 2 that is included up to infinity, not included. So it is the union of those two intervals. The next exercise we're doing is number 67 on page 18 in your textbook. It says, show that if 0 is less than a, which is less than b, then a squared will be less than b squared. So how do we approach this? Well, we have to use the information that we are given, which is 0 is less than a, which is less than b, to get to what we want to show, which is that a squared is less than b squared. Okay. So, let's start with what we have. We know that 0 is less than a, which is less than b. Okay. Since we know this, we know that both a and b are positive numbers, right? Okay. Therefore, a multiplied by a has to be less than a multiplied by b. Because I'm just multiplying both of these positive numbers by a positive number. And a multiplied by b also has to be less than b multiplied by b. Once again, 
I'm just multiplying both of these positive numbers by a positive number. So what, what do we have now? Now we have that a squared is less than a multiplied by b and a multiplied by b is less than b squared. So a squared is less than a b which is less than b squared and hence a squared is less than b squared which is what we wanted to show. We are now looking at the exercises under section 1.1 on page 21 of your textbook. We are going to look at number 36 first. It says find the domain of the function f u equals u plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over u plus 1. So if we want to find the domain of a function, what do we know? Specifically, what do we know about the denominator? What can it not equal? It cannot equal zero. But there's another denominator in the denominator. So this one can also not equal zero. So from there, it's pretty easy to find the domain of the function. We have to set up two equations. The first one will be, we know that u plus 1 cannot be 0. And also, 1 plus 1 over u plus 1 cannot be 0. So solve u from that, from those two equations, and write the domain down yourself. We are looking at number 47 next, and it asks us to sketch the graph of the function gt equals the absolute value of 1 minus 3t. So if we just had the function gt equals 1 minus 3t without the absolute values, that would just be a normal straight line, right? But what happens now is we have absolute values. So let's look at what that means. We have gt equals, so it's going to be the positive 1 minus 3t if 1 minus 3t is greater than or equal to 0. And it's going to be the negative 1 minus 3t if 1 minus 3t is less than 0. So we have 1 minus 3t if t is less than or equal to a third. And it's going to be 3t minus 1 if t is greater than a third. So from this point, see if you can sketch the graph yourself. Next, we are looking at the exercises under section 1.2 of your textbook on page 33. We are looking at number 5. It says, find the domain of the function f of x equals cos x over 1 minus sin x. What do we know when we are asked for the domain? Well, the first thing we know is the denominator cannot be equal to what? It cannot be equal to 0. So we know 1 minus sin x cannot be equal to 0. So now we solve this equation. This is if and only if sin x is not equal to 1, which is if and only if x is not equal to, so in radians, what can x not be equal to? It cannot be equal to 
pi over 2 plus 2n pi. So the domain is going to be x or x where x is not equal to pi over 2 plus 2n multiplied by pi and n is an integer. We are now looking at the exercises under section 1.3 of your textbook on page 44. Number 50 says, express the function in the form of f's composition with g's composition with h, where big H of x equals the 8th root of 2 plus the absolute value of x. So let's just first look at what does the composition function we have here mean. So this means we have, let's start from the right. We have a function h of x. Then we have g at h of x. And then we have f at g at h of x. So what we basically want to do is we want to break this function big h of x up into three smaller functions and then when they are put together we get the composition which gives us big h of x so the best way to do this is to start from the inside so we're going to find what we think is h so the most inside function that we can find here would be the absolute value of x so we can say h of x equals the absolute value of x. Now we want to try and find the next most inside function. The next most inside function that we can find will be 2 plus something. 2 plus x. Remember that we don't write absolute value of x here because when we do our composition, we will say g at h of x and h of x is the absolute value of x. So it will become 2 plus the absolute value of x. And then finally, f will be the 8th root of x so if we now put these three functions together what do we get so f's composition with g's composition with h of x we said is f at g at h of x which is f at g and we say the function h of x is the absolute value of x. Then we have f at g of the absolute value of x. What is g of x? g of x is 2 plus x. So g of the absolute value of x will be 2 plus the absolute value of x. Then we have f of 2 plus the absolute value of x. f of x is the 8th root of x. So f of 2 plus the absolute value of x will be the 8th root of 2 plus the absolute value of x, which is indeed big H. The final exercise that we're looking at is on page 45 and it's number 65. It says, suppose that g is an even function and let h be equal to f's composition with g. Is h always an even function? So what does it mean again when a function is an even function? Well, that means that g of minus x is just equal to g of x. 
So what do we want to do? Well, we want to look at whether h is also an even function. In other words, whether h of minus x is also equal to h of x. So we are going to examine h of minus x. So h of minus x equals f's composition with g of minus x, which is f of g of minus x. And what do we know about g? g is an even function. So g of minus x is just g of x. And what is this equal to? Well, this is just equal to f's composition with g of x, which is h of x. So, since h of minus x is equal to h of x, h is indeed an even function. This is the end of the video for this week's SMART tutorial.